Hi, I'm Carl and I work on numeric analysis of race forces bones. Together with my supervisors, we are combining engineering tools like computational mechanics with veterinary expertise and diagnostics to develop sophisticated tools that will help to quantify the risk of fracture for bones. But why horses? Horses are an ideal model for investigating the bones. Using horses, we can study the effects of many factors including age, nutrition, and exercise on bone. These factors are really important for medical research. That means all the results can be highly reproducible, which significantly improves the quality of our study. Our research aims to prevent metacarpal bone fractures, a major problem in racehorses. Thanks to advanced medical imaging, like computer tomography, we are in possession of very accurate bone geometry models, which can be directly used for simulations. In case of racehorses, the loading on bones can be so strenuous and repetitive that bone cells won't have enough time to properly repair the bone tissue. The result is maladaptation, which leads to an increase in bone's propensity for fracture. During the early stages of my study, I have developed a tool which can simulate the effect of different loading conditions on the bone and predict its resulting density and internal structure. Here you can see proximal femur exposed to a normal daily loading, such as walking. Its internal structure adapts to minimize the stress that occurs in the bone. Comparison with the actual bone scans shows very good agreement. This model can be very useful to predict the versatility of implants for particular patients. Before we cut a man's bones, we can test if, by chance, the implant would be too stiff for him, causing so-called stress shielding and eventually loosening the implant. Now back to our metacarpal bone. For the numerical models, we CT scan cadaver limbs to obtain the accurate geometry of the bone. To translate the radio opacity to the bone mineral density, we use a special calibration phantoms during scanning. And at last, we approximate the densities with meshless moving least squares method onto finite element mesh. Thanks to that, we get this beautiful and more importantly, smooth density field. With the prepared model at hand, we can simulate the bone's response to the applied loading over time. Again, as you can see, the model behaves in principle like a real bone. We see the development of a cortical shaft and densification of trabecular bone next to the applied loading. The regions that are not used are being resorbed. The properly calibrated and accurate simulation of this process is crucial for estimating the propensity for fracture. In our racehorses, third metacarpal bone fractures usually start from harmless microcracks close to so-called sagittal grooves. Because of suppressed bone remodeling in this part of the bone, small microfractures propagate into serious injury. But why even small microcracks can be so dangerous and unpredictable? When we apply loading on an elastic body, the forces will flow uniformly across the entire solid. However, when the same body happens to have a sharp crack, we can see that the forces are now concentrating at the tip. At the same time, this region is being completely unloaded. The elastic energy carried by this part has been released. Now, in case of brittle materials, the crack will do something critical. It will use all this release energy to create new surfaces, the surfaces of the crack. So crack front is like a black hole, a singularity, which feeds itself with the elastic energy of the body what is the most dangerous about it is the fact that as the crack grows longer, the release of energy at some points dominates the surface energy. The body is resistant to create new surfaces. Once these two energies balance each other, at a certain critical crack length, the crack growth is spontaneous and catastrophic. And no matter how large and strong the structure is, once the crack reaches a specific threshold, the failure is inevitable. The complex nature of cracks makes them very difficult to simulate. For convenience, in configurational mechanics, we split the crack propagation process into material domain in which we can observe the crack only and spatial domain when we can see the body's deformation. Thanks to this idea, we can observe configurational forces acting on the crack tip. In our model, we are trying to find the directions and magnitudes of these forces that will maximize the energy release while satisfying the second law of thermodynamics. This approach is very powerful it allows us for simulating complex cracks in heterogeneous bodies, such as bones. There aren't many programs that can do that. We hope that we could use it as a diagnostic tool to simulate the response of individual horses' bone to high-intensity exercise, predict their density, and then quantify the risk of fracture by simulating its propagation. That would allow us to provide advice for a horse trainer, for instance, to modify the workout routine and possibly save the horse's life. But that's work in progress. Here are some other models that are implemented in MOFEM. These and many more you will find on our website. Thank you for listening.